You're gonna wanna stick around for the end of this game because Magnus Carlsen sacks his queen. And of course, if you wanna see more Magnus Carlsen games into the future, click on the subscribe button down below. We are a growing channel and it is free. free. So help us out, click on the subscribe button down below and let's jump right into the game. All right, so in this game, we have Magnum Carlsbad, AKA Magnus Carlsen playing with the white pieces and with the black pieces, we've got a guy by the name of Neil Ben which is two first names, which is very suspicious, as one Ben Feingold would say. Very suspicious. In any event, we begin the game with the moves e4 and c5. We have a Sicilian defense, and Magnus goes for the open Sicilian with the move knight to f3. And the idea is that he wants to push forward in the center of the board with this move d4. Lots of different types of Sicilians. We're not going to worry about that. Now we have a very interesting move, and that is the move a6. And this is the O'Kelly variation. And there's a lot of different things about the O'Kelly variation that we're not going to go into because we're about to move out of it pretty quickly. But Magnus goes for this move C4. And this is a very interesting setup from Magnus. And the idea behind this is that you're going to have a Meroxy bind sort of pawn structure where you have both the E pawn on the E4 square and the C pawn on the C4 square. And these two pawns are going to clamp down on the center of the board, preventing anything from moving up. And it also prevents anything from pushing forward here on the b5 square. And this is something that is known as the Meroxy bind because these two pawns bind the position closed. This is a very common pawn structure, especially as you increase your rating. And so it's really important for you to know this um, because you're going to see it happen a lot in many different positions. Now, with all of that being said, we're just going to kind of continue on from here without getting into the intricacies of it. So in any event, we have the move e6, and the idea is that black is trying to build up for this d5 push. And so Magnus now decides that he wants to strike right away into the center of the board and plays the move d4. And after c takes on d4, knight takes on d4, we now have that classic Meroxy bind where the c pawn and the d pawn have traded off but we have the pawns on the e4 and c4 square clamping down. This is very, very common. We have now transposed into the con Meroxy bind formation of the Sicilian defense. And here we have the completion of the development. We have to move knight to f6, developing the knight out and putting some pressure onto this central pawn. And Magnus now defends with the move knight to c3, simply defending the pawn in the center of the board on the e4 square, which was being attacked by this knight. Now we have the move bishop to b4, looking to pin the knight onto the king. And this is done for the obvious reason that it now no longer defends this pawn on the e4 square. Now here Magnus has a few ways of defending this pawn on the e5 square. He can either bring his queen up to the d3 square. He can bring his bishop out to the d3 square. He can also bring the queen out to the f3 square, or he could push forward and play f3 himself. Now... The best move is actually just to play the move f3, but that's a little weakening, especially with your king still in the center of the board. But you have to do something about um, this issue. Now, here Magnus makes a critical error, and he's young at this point in time, so I'm not going to like fault him too much for it, is that he decides that he doesn't actually want to defend the pawn. He instead wants to use the pawn to attack the knight, and so he plays the move e5. Now the problem with the move e5 is that now you have just allowed for a very common tactical motif. And that common tactical motif is what we call PP on the PP. And that is not inappropriate. So um, for anybody who's watching this later, who is maybe a little bit younger, you don't have to worry about that. It's not inappropriate. It basically means put pressure on the pinned piece. PP on the PP, put pressure on the pinned piece. And that's exactly what Magnus's opponent does. He plays the move knight to e4, right where the knight, uh, where that pawn used to be. As you can see, it was on the e4 square. After e5, now the knight goes to the e4 square. And now the knight and the bishop are targeting this knight. And you could potentially have a situation where you have a fork. And that is going to be no good at all. And Magnus now, in order to defend, plays the move queen out to the f3 square. Both defending this knight as well as attacking this knight. And in this position, there are two good moves for black, one of them significantly better than the other, and Magnus's opponent finds it, and that is the move queen to a5, putting some additional pressure onto this pinned piece. As you can see, there are now three, one, two, and three 
pieces that are now attacking this knight. There is a lot of pressure there. And yes, you can take the knight um, with the queen if you, for example, have the move uh, queen takes on e4. After bishop takes on c3, you cannot take this back because if you do, then the queen will come down. Um, here, I'll just show it to you. Pawn takes, queen takes, and now you're getting forked. And so that is no good. So really not a pleasant position um, to be in. And the best thing to do is actually just to move the king over to the d1 square um, in that position. None of this happens, so I will get rid of all of this. And instead we have a series of funky moves, and that is knight going to the e2 square, backing up, trying to defend. And the best move in this position is actually for the knight to take. And usually when you are blocking in the bishop, it's not that great, and your king is stuck in the center of the board. So there's a lot of issues with this position for Magnus. And here we have a pretty big mistake from Magnus's opponent, and that is the queen taking on the e5 square. And as you can see, the evaluation suddenly jumps up a bunch because now there's not really any pressure on this knight. I mean, there's still pressure with the bishop, but I mean, what is this queen doing here? And the knight. I mean, they're not really doing too much. And quite frankly, um, after we have the move bishop to f4, a great move for Magnus, taking the opportunity to attack the queen with the bishop. Now Magnus is one step away from castling to the queen side and getting out of any sort of pin issues. So with all of that being said, the queen now has to move out of the way. It moves over to the f5 square and Magnus here plays a disastrous move, unfortunately, and he plays the move at knight going back to the d4 square. What are you doing? And this is no good because now after queen to a5, Magnus is having the same issues that he had in the previous position. Yes, he's one step away from castling, but the bishop's here, the knight's still pressuring, and again, you cannot take this knight so easily because if you do, then the bishop takes the knight and you've got all kinds of problems. So, and now you don't even have the additional benefit of having the bishop back over on the c1 square defending the b2 pawn like we did in the previous position. So here Magnus now plays another mistake, and that is the move rook to c1, trying to defend. Now, this causes a huge problem if the move f5 is played because now you will never be able to get rid of this uh, knight unless you trade it off for your bishop. So lots of issues in this position for Magnus. Luckily for him, Magnus's opponent makes another mistake, and that is with the move bishop takes on e3 with a check. Sometimes in chess, you need to be patient. Unfortunately, Magnus's opponent, not very patient, but after b takes on c3, now there's no issues. We now have the move d5 looking to solidify this knight and ask what this pawn is doing. And of course, if you take uh, here, then everything's just solidified. You'll have castling happen very soon. No big issues. Instead of that, we have the move bishop to d3 looking to get rid of this knight with the bishop. Now Magnus's opponent simply castles his king out of the center of the board. Here Magnus, sensing all of the pressure, tries to get rid of some of that pressure and he t plays the move bishop takes on e4. And the problem with bishop takes on e4 is that now after d takes on e4, you've got to do something with this queen. And it's not as simple as snap taking. A lot of people like to snap take, but remember, your king must remain safe. And if you simply take this, you are going to run into issues. For example, if you have the queen take on the e4 square, then you have the danger of this move e5, and this is a dangerous move. You can't simply take it because all of a sudden then the rook joins the party, and with the queen teaming up, you are going to get bulldozed. So you can't actually take this pawn on the e4 square because with your king still in the center of the board. The best thing for you to do is just move your queen out of the way, I don't know, to the g3 square maybe, and then look to bring the bishop down and target this pawn on the e g7 square, we have the move queen to g3 looking to laser beam down onto this g7 square, potentially the bishop coming out to the h6 square in order to target that. Of course, you would not be able to take if the bishop was there because there is a pin on the king. We now have the move knight to d7, and the problem with this is that the light square bishop for black is pretty stuck right now, and of course the idea is still to push forward in the center of the board with the move e5. So there are some positives and some negatives into the position, but overall, Black is doing a very nice job in this position. And here Magnus finally decides that he wants to get his king out of the center of the board. He castles his king out of the way, and now we have the move 
king to h8. And this is a weird move, but I understand it. You want to get out of the way of this bishop coming down and potentially causing some issues for you. And it's not the best move, but I'm understanding why it was played. So because Magnus can't go to the h file, he instead goes the other way to the d file and plays the move bishop to d6, targeting this rook on the f8 square. Magnus's opponent now moves the rook out of the way to the e8 square, and Magnus now plays the move f3. And this is a mistake. And the reason why it's a mistake is because you're weakening your king. And yes, you do have the added benefit of having the dark squared bishop in order to come and help and protect just in case. But it's still not a good idea to needlessly do this. You see, back in this position, you could have simply moved the rook over from the f1 square to the e1 square and targeted this pawn all the same. So I don't really know what the big idea was. In any event, after the move f3, we now have the move e3 pushing forward and restricting the movement of Magnus's queen going back. Magnus now looking for maximum danger plays the move queen to f4. And the idea is not only to collect this pawn on the e3 square, but the secondary idea is to bring the queen down and target this pawn on the f7 square. And that's going to be very, very dangerous because then the uh, bishop might come down and you have all sorts of issues. So Lots of different problems in this position. And Magnus's opponent now plays the move f6 in order to prevent at least one of the ideas. The queen now backs up and takes on the e3 square. And now we have an equal position in terms of pawns and in terms of pieces. However, if we look, Magnus has doubled pawns. He has this isolated a pawn and he has weakened his king a little bit. But Magnus's opponent has nice pawns, which are all having their own file independent, no isolated pawns as well as no doubled pawn. And so it's a little bit of an advantage for Magnus's opponent in terms of the pawn structure. Now we have the move knight to b6, swinging the knight out to the side of the board, targeting this pawn. Magnus here now finds a really good move, and that is the move knight to b3. And the idea behind knight to b3 is that obviously Magnus is attacking the queen on the a5 square that has just been blocked, an escape path going back um, with this knight here on the b6 square. And the real big problem is that Magnus is not only targeting the queen, he's also targeting this knight with his own queen. And so you can't simply move up trying to get out of the way because if you do, well, then you're going to end up losing your knight. So for example, if we have the move queen to a4, then Magnus can simply collect. So that's not a good idea. Let me get rid of all of this. And instead, we have the move knight takes on c4 and Magnus is now being attacked himself. Now Magnus's best play here is to simply take the queen and move on with his life. However, he plays a disastrous move and that is the move queen to e2, an unbelievable blunder. And the reason why it's a blunder is because now the queen can move over to the b5 square. And now you've got some serious issues because I'm targeting this bishop and you're going to have to do something with that. So a lot of different issues are going to arise out of this position. And that's exactly what happens. We have queen to b5 sliding over. And now what are you going to do with this bishop? Magnus now decides that he's going to go to the g3 square. And that's the best move, of course. But as you can see, it is a minus 1.9 position against Magnus. And Magnus's opponent now suddenly realizing that he has an opportunity to open up lines for his bishop, plays the move e5. And now look at this nice chain of pawns doing a great job at negating this bishop, as well as opening up the door for his own bishop. So really nice stuff from Magnus's opponent. We now have the bishop going to the f2 square, trying to get out of that, opening up lines again for the bishop. And now in this position, for some reason, we have this Bizarre oscillation between good moves and not so good moves. We have the move bishop to f5, which targets absolutely nothing, um, as well as helps defend only one pawn. So that loses about a fourth of the advantage. We're now down to a 1.4 advantage for black. Unfortunately, Magnus helps uh, his opponent out by playing the move rook f to d1, which I don't really understand because now you can have this move b6, but... In any event, we're just going to continue on. Magnus's opponent gives him the favor back and says, oh, you played a bad move. I'm going to play a bad move too and plays the move rook a to d8. And trading off here is kind of weird. So you don't want to give up the file in this position. So here Magnus now plays the move knight to c5. And that is why, by the way, back in this position, it's better to play the move b6 because you prevent anything from jumping in on the... Uh, 
on the fifth rank here. So instead of that, we have to move rook a to d8, and now knight jumps into the c5 square, and Magnus's opponent here plays the move b6, but this isn't going to get the job done because now Magnus can play the move a4, utilizing his knight's position to attack this queen. And now the question is, uh, how are you still going to be defending this knight? Like, that's a legitimate question, I think. And Magnus's opponent says, I'm not going to. I'm going to play the move queen to b2. And this does open up the doors for the queens to see each other offering a queen trade. But if Magnus plays queen takes on b2, then after the rook takes on the d1 square, rook takes on d1, knight takes on b2, you have a situation where Magnus's knight as well as his rook are hanging. And uh, the rook could go up to the d6 square. But... There's a lot of issues in this position. In any event, we don't have any of that. And we instead have the move queen takes on c4, taking the knight. And after b takes on c5, we have traded off the knights. And now the pawn structure is fairly symmetrical, although Magnus is still down a pawn. So he now takes on c5. So he's now collected the pawn on the c5 square. And now everything is equal in terms of material. Now, here Magnus's opponent plays an interesting move, and that is the move rook to d2. And rook to d2 does target over onto the f2 square, but also it's looking to double stack here on the d file and bulldoze down the board. So we have the move queen to b6, looking for another trade, being defended, of course, by the bishop. And instead of just going for the simple queen trade or taking on d1 and dealing with everything afterwards, we instead have a very, very calculated play from Magnus's opponent. And it's not a good calculation, I'll tell you that much. And that is queen takes on c3. <gasps> yep. The idea, of course, is that after Magnus takes on c3, rook takes on d1 with a check. And now there is no way for Magnus to get out of it. So he has to block with the bishop. So the bishop comes back onto the uh, e1 square. Magnus's opponent takes on e1. And we are left with a situation where Magnus has a queen and a rook. But Magnus's opponent has the two rooks. He has the rook pair and a bishop. And of course, if it was just the two rooks, Magnus would be in a completely winning position. But this extra bishop is what makes it an equal position. Additionally... Magnus does have potentially a little bit of an imbalance in terms of the pawns because, of course, Magnus has 1, 2, 3 versus 1, 2, 3, 4, and these two pawns cancel each other out, at least for now. So everything is pretty much equal. So Magnus's king, of course, is in check, so it has to move out of the way. It moves to the uh, f2 square, and now Magnus's opponent plays the move rook to b1. Now, yes, Theoretically speaking, Magnus could take this pawn, but the problem is, is that you have to look at king's safety, and Magnus's king is wide open. And so if you were to take this pawn, for example, queen takes the pawn on the a6 square, then after this move rook to b2, then the king would have to uh, move up to the g3 square, and you would have a big attack coming in. And so this is not exactly a great spot to be in if you are Magnus. So, of course, it all zeroes, but... You don't really want to play this. So let's get rid of all of this. And instead we have the move queen to c6, which does target this rook here on the uh, e8 square. And of course, if the rook goes up to give a check now, now the king can move up and you will still have a hanging rook. So that's the bit of a difference because you have a little bit of additional time, a little bit of additional tempo to kind of consolidate your position. So with all of that being said, the rook now moves over to the b8 square. The rooks are now connected here on the b file, and that can be a little bit annoying uh, for Magnus to have to deal with, but he now plays a great move, and it's the one move which does not lead to complete equality, and that is the move g4. And now the question is, what are you doing with this bishop? Because the bishop can't go forward at all, because, of course, it would be taken by a pawn, or by the rook, or by the rook. And if it tries to go backwards anywhere along here, it will be taken by the queen. And I mean anywhere, including to the c8 square, which, which looks safe. But if you uh, play that move, if you play this, don't forget, look at the position of your king. You're going to have back rank checkmate, because then the queen can come in and deliver a mate. So you actually can't play that. 
Um, it looks like you can on first glance, but if you look around on the uh, board, you can't do that. And so the only move for the bishop is to go backwards. Now, of course, you can throw in a check, which is what we have. We have rook one to b2. Okay, great. I'm going to move the king up to the g3 square, which Magnus does. And now after the bishop moves to the g6 square, Magnus plays a very interesting move. It's not the best move in this position, but it's the same idea as before. And the best move in this position is to push forward even more and just rip everything open. However, in this position, Magnus Carlsen plays Eric Rosen's favorite move, Oh No My Queen. Oh No My Queen. And plays the move Queen to C8 with a check, which I'm giving a brilliancy. It's of course not completely winning because the rook does not have to take. The bishop can go back. However, if you were to take then it's the same idea, back rank checkmate. And of course, this is not what happened in this game, in this position. The best move, of course, is to simply block. But after that, then the queen will go and collect on the a6 square. And Magnus would go on to win that, I'm sure. However, in this position, realizing that he's pretty much busted, Magnus's opponent actually resigns in this position. Whew! That is a long game. I hope you stuck with me. I know that was a long game and there was a lot of intricacies in terms of the positions. But I hope that you enjoyed it. And of course, if you want to see more Magnus Carlsen games into the future, click on the subscribe button down below. And if you want to see some more right now, click on the playlist, which is floating somewhere up here. I hope you enjoyed the game of chess and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.